Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance session on youth participation at the IGF. Thank you all so much for joining us here today, and I am very pleased that um, you are able to come and join this session. I would like to start off telling you a little bit more about what the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance does. We are a dynamic coalition uh, of the Internet Governance Forum, and we represent youth. We advocate for the youth voices at the IGF, but not only here, also internationally at other forums and stakeholder environments in which youth should be part of the negotiations, discussions, and uh, policy-making proposal uh, participation um, areas. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Nadia Czechia, and I represent the Western European and Others Group for the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. I am normally joined by steering members from the other regional groups who are unfortunately not able to make it today, but they send their best regards, and we hope that we have a fruitful discussion from all the different regions today so that we can ensure that uh, the, that we manage to have a, a full and rich discussion that crosses borders and crosses sectors. One thing I wanted to share with you is what we have done at the Youth Coalition Internet Governance in the last uh, few years. So what are our activities? It falls under kind of three areas that is related to what you put into this session today. Your comments, your thoughts, your ideas, your vision for the future, we bring that together and create a strategy, a plan and proposal of what we're going to do, not only at the IGF, but also at other forums internationally. So we start with participation. Many of you are part of our youth expert list. At the IGF and other foras, we use this youth expert list in which young people can leave their expertise and their locations behind so that we can go up to uh, session organizers and tell them, we have youth experts in your area working on your expertises and making sure that these youth experts are part of the panels because we should have inclusive discussions in which young people are actually presenting the ideas that they're working with. The policy should not go about issues uh, that we are implementing we, that we do not understand or that we don't have involvement in. So if you're not on, uh, uh, on our list, please do and make sure that you are on here. In terms of our outreach, when my mandate started um, in Geneva, um, one of our participants from NLIGF mentioned, we have these IGFs, these are so international, so global, but we always find that there is a lack of local uh, youth being involved in the processes, whether or not as volunteers, whether or not attending all the different sessions. How is that possible that we're going to all these beautiful places, but the locals are not there? Youth should be able to travel just mm -hmm. around the corner. So during Paris, we had an email campaign in which we uh, reached out to all universities and schools in Paris to encourage them to come to the IGF and promote the IGF sessions which are about youth uh, and in which youth should be presenting ideas. Um, and this was very, very good. But the issue that we faced there was in Paris, it was during school weeks, so young people couldn't attend because they had to attend classes and they were not able to get the uh, opportunity to leave and this was very unfortunate. However, during this year, during that year in Paris, the group raised that there needs to be more focus on girls' empowerment, girls' education, and access for people. So this year, uh, our strategy outreach were to sustainable development goals activists in rural and local areas. And what you think, uh, what you Weisig did is we supported applications and not in a way in which, we, uh, in which we invited people, but we helped people write emails. We helped with market research on sponsorships. We helped with research on fundraising. We found uh, ways on um, how to do interview preparations uh, in their local environments. We connected people to uh, internet, government, uh, internet governance organizations who are also coming, so they had the opportunity. We had 34 international applications from countries like Kurdistan, Maldives, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, Philippines, Burundi, and Bangladesh. But of all these different applications, of these 34, we had only one successful visa application. And I'm very pleased to introduce to you Umar Khan, who's coming here today from Pakistan. He's sitting over there. 
Um, he is a youth activist that uh, uh, focuses on girls' empowerment and um, has an organization in which he empowers um, widows and orphans to meet their full potential. So we are very happy that you're able to come and uh, overcome all the different hardships to still meet us here at the IGF. The third area that we worked on is partnerships and promotion. So we joined other forums and events to talk about uh, youth participation in IGF. We also gave training on um, a variety of different issues in which they needed youth participants. But also, uh, the youth co uh, YSIC joins the dynamic coalitions co meetings with the IGF Secretariat, in which we also organize and participate uh, with the DC session, which happened yesterday, uh, in which all the dynamic coalitions come together to uh, present what we're working towards on, on a particular issue. So uh, if you haven't, uh, weren't able to join us yesterday, Please have a look online to see how the dynamic coalitions are working together because all our work as youth uh, does fit in with all the dynamic coalition sessions uh, that are happening. So um, in that regard, uh, we can find opportunities and partnerships and collaborations that just go beyond just being youth, but also going into the topics and sectors. We are here to connect people. We are here to ensure that we can build partnerships and ensure that you have the access to the full potential, which is the IGF and other international forums. So please reach out to us if you wanted to work on projects or if you wanted to uh, move forward. And I look very much forward to seeing what you can all achieve in your local environments, but also internationally. Having said all this, the internet governance area is so much more than just young people working on particular individual issues. And there are so many different forums that youth are participating in. In Europe, we have YouthDIG, uh, which is part of EuroDIG. We have CDIG. We have uh, youth IGFs. We have summer schools. And what uh, we wanted to do today as part of this session is to bring that all together and look at the issues that youth in these regions have uh, been presenting and focusing on and uh, advocating for. And therefore, I would like to introduce to you our following speakers. We have two remote uh, speakers today joining us from, um, from abroad. We have Ufa Modi from Digital Grassroots. She's calling us from Africa. And we have Ellen Kusuma from Youth IGF Indonesia, who, who's calling us from Indonesia. And right next to me, we have Marco Paloski, who is ambassador for CDIC. Next to Marco is Jan Donal. He is from, um, he's a, um, a participant of YouthDIC. And Elizabeth Schauermann is uh, the uh, organizer of the Youth IGF Summit, which was uh, hosted here in Berlin last Sunday. I look very much uh, to hear about your interventions about what were the priority key area, key topics and issues that you've presented in your areas. And I would like to look at our remote moderator to ask whether or not we can have Ufa on the line to present her ideas starting with Africa. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Okay, awesome. Hi, everyone. Good morning from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I'm so glad to be participating remotely in this session. And I hope all of you are having fun at the IGF. I'm Upo Modi. I am, the, I am Nigerian. I'm the co-founder and vice president of Digital Grassroots. And today, I'll be highlighting some of the issues that youth from the African region face in their participation in internet gov in the IGF from my perspective as an African youth. You see, in the African region, we've already pretty much um, agreed that internet technology is extremely crucial to our development in future. However, where there's not much being done to ensure that the next generation of Africans are properly equipped with the knowledge required to build the healthy internet that we want. I'm talking about the African youth. African youth need to fully understand um, the core principles of the internet. It is going to be really hard for us to have any real development in the sector or in our participation if we are not aware of the issues. We need to understand all the issues of um, what are the key challenges to the IGF. The IGF issues, openness, decentralization, digital inclusion, privacy, security. We need to fully understand 
what these issues are and how they affect us. In recent years, the African region has seen a lot of newcomers. Many of them are participating in the IGF um, there as well, but it's not enough. We need more experience to facilitate our participation in the global IG ecosystem. How exactly can we contribute to open standards development in the, at the IETF to IP resource management at Affini, to advocating for numerous digital rights and human rights online? We need that inclusion and experience. Unless we get this first-hand experience, it's going to be really hard for us to um, have more, more practical um, um, impact in the global space. And then for our avenues to um, improve our involvement and our return rates to the IGF, and that has to do a lot with understanding, like I said earlier. Unless we fully understand what um, these internet governance topics are, we wouldn't, we really, it's going to be very hard for us to make relevant contributions because it's not enough to just say these buzzwords, new and emerging technologies, privacy, security, um, surveillance, they all sound really well, but what exactly are they? Do we really understand them and how, and how they um, affect our communities locally? And then talking about local participation, we should not only look at participating in the IGF on the global level, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in our local community. I'm talking about national and regional participation. This year, we had the African, in the African region, we had the African Youth IGF and the West African Youth IGF and the Nigerian Youth IGF. That has been really, really good for promoting the inclusion of, um, Af of Africans in, in internet governance. And then for our participation in the global IGF, that has to do with um, that, um, it's mostly facilitated by support to attend the global IGF. That is a very big problem for us here in Africa. And um, personally, um, um, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of travel support from international organizations to facilitate this um, participation over the years. But it's not enough because we need to have more local support. Youth, I'm talking to the um, to um, the African youth now. We need to show our local internet stakeholders our role in internet governance and, the, um, and what we can actually contribute to the global IGF. That way we can easily get funding and support to um, travel and participate in the IGF. And sometimes it's not only about getting this support. Another challenge that we face is visas. At the moment right now, I'm not at the IGF because I was not able to get my visa approved in time to travel. That is the reality of many African youth. I'm not quite sure how we can solve this problem, but I know for sure that if we communicate that this is a reality and it's a problem for us, and um, because it's not um, the, um, when you hear attending an IGF meeting or an internet governance related public meeting, the first thing that comes to your mind shouldn't be, oh my gosh, will I get a visa to travel? So. I'm not quite sure how we, we um, will solve this problem, but I'm sure that if we communicate the issues to the appropriate stakeholders, the, we would be able to come up with some sort of um, solution or, uh, or, uh, or avenues to explore to um, solve that problem. And then last but not the least, sometimes you can get all the funding, you can get your visas, but then at participating in the event will be a challenge because most of the IGF activities or some IGF activities may not particularly be tailored for youth participation. So um, IGF organizers and IGF activity organizers as a whole should always ensure that they have a youth agenda in their activity. It would make participation easier for youth if they are able, if they can see a platform for them to actually contribute to the discussion. So I think that's something that um, all um, IG stakeholders can look into to see how um, uh, we can um, facilitate that participation. But basically, yeah, I believe that the um, African youth have a lot to offer. We're smart, we're resourceful, and we just need support from our community and uh, a platform to get our voices heard. So if we can get all this in the way, we can get all the um, opportunities for our participation. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your perspective. I really very much enjoy that you said that we are smart and resourceful, and I hope that we are able in the discussion afterwards to come together to find uh, answers to some of the issues that you raised. Uh, I really um, appreciate how you uh, called it the healthy internet, understanding the healthy internet. 
um, raising the issue again of what is IG and how do we present that to stakeholders who are outside uh, the IG uh, sphere and encouraging those people to then fund participants. Um, I see the issue as well with, with visas. Hopefully we can briefly address this, but this is generally quite out of our hands. Um, but I, I really look forward perhaps to also opening further the discussion on um, how you, IGF activities are not tailored to youth participation because there is no youth agenda. So thank you very much for your comments. I would like to turn back to our remote moderator and ask her whether or not we can ask if Elin Kusuma could join us, who is joining us from Indonesia. Hello. Hi, Hi Ellen. Ellen. Okay, you can hear me. Uh, can I get my presentation on the screen? <laughs> Someone is planning a really exciting adventure somewhere. Are we invited? Wonderful. Okay. We can see your presentation now. First of all, thank you for the opportunity for, for the opportunity from uh, YCIG, uh, so that we can uh, Indonesia Youth IGF can join this session. So you have uh, posed three questions. I would like to uh, to address the third question first. Uh, the which challenges do you face to attend and participate at the IGF? So the Indonesian context. Uh, Indonesian in average, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this is only a background. So in Indonesia, we have a large active internet user that in average uh, spend around eight hours and a half every day in the internet. And in 2030, uh, we will have like a demo, uh, bonus dem demographic bonus which means that uh, youth will be the largest population in Indonesia. However, uh, there, is also, there is lack of youth representation that comes from inside the youth, them, the youth themselves and also act, representation that actively participate and was get, uh, what's involved in the discussion of internet governance in Indonesia. There is also uh, pub, uh, on the other hand, uh, Indonesian youth are very active in the internet and also uh, an active social media users that somehow they are aware on the internet policies, but however, uh, the awareness comes from the controversies around the internet policies. For example, we have ITE law in Indonesia, which is regulated electronic transaction and negative content in the internet, but some of the articles uh, on, in that law are potentially violating or restricting freedom of expression in Indonesia. So they are aware of internet, somewhat aware of internet policies, but because the controversies. So they are not really aware on the internet governance uh, ecosystem itself. So, there is also an absence of aspiration platform uh, for youth, so they can like uh, have their their aspiration uh, to the multi stakeholders of the internet governance. So, next slide, please. So these are some issues that we have faced in Indonesia, the misinformation, the privacy violation, cyberbullying, hate speech on online SGDP, also content moderating uh, in Indonesia. So you mostly uh, have concern on these, these several issues, especially uh, right now it's online SGDP uh, on the NCII or non-consensual distribution of internet images. We have faced so many youth uh, was a victim of online SDBC. Next. So this is the barriers. Uh, we have a very diverse socio-cultural background. If you know Indonesian map, we are archipelagos. 
we have like 70,000 islands in Indonesia. So yeah, uh, there is also the wide range target age. So it's quite hard to to reach all of it because the age gap also the scarce knowledge on the internet issues. Because internet is almost about anything. And the disparities on internet connection because uh, Java is like the most populated and like uh, have the most uh, internet infrastructure ready for the people inside to get access and so on. But like any other islands might not be so lucky. So what we do is we do the grassroots intervention. Uh, we reach out to them. We engage with the local community. We uh, do the gathering uh, with so many stakeholders. We also do online surveys uh, and also information dissemination. Next. Uh, so, your next question is how can we improve enforcement and return rights of youth at the IGF? So, from our experience, it's like more initiative, more awareness, more exposure, more collaboration, and switching to youth policy forum. Uh, and not taken youth only as a symbol, like like just uh, tokenism. That uh, next slide, please. This is several activities that we have uh, that we did. Uh, like we are having what show it to ten cities, uh, ten university, and ten cities in Indonesia to work on the general election issues uh, with so many multi-stakeholders such as Google, Perludem, or Mavindo organization that is working on hoax, uh, busting hoax. But yeah, next activities. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is, we, we are doing some survey that ask the youth to uh, fill out our survey. This is about uh, freedom of expression uh, in the internet. So they, they, most of the responders doesn't really feel safe on the internet and doesn't really aware on the internet policies. Next slide, please. Yeah, these are, uh, this is our activities on the national dialogue of uh, internet governance. We have been there for two years. Uh, the participation is also lacking because uh, this national dialogue only happened in Jakarta, the capital city of Indonesia. Next. This is also a survey that we did uh, on the privacy, uh, talking about privacy and data protection in Indonesia. Uh, so basically, youth are aware of the internet policies uh, such like I said before, but the internet governance ecosystem, they are not really aware on how to reach out to, to that and uh, include or involve themselves uh, in the discussion. Next. Yeah, this is also a uh, part of our activities uh, with uh, like uh, universities, Google and Facebook. We also talk about mental health in one of our activities because it's important uh, the youth face maybe cyberbullying in Indonesia. I think uh, elsewhere, elsewhere will be kind of the same. Next. Okay, not that. Uh, I would like to address uh, the third question. Which issues do you want to highlight as priority key points at the IGF to global stakeholders? So I, I'm hoping for a stronger regional solidarity and network for you to speak on because a uh, regional problem is different than the global. So that for a first and then include and get you, uh, get you to involve and not just a tokenism in every discussion. Like for example, I read uh, Brett Solomon have tweeted on the first day of the IGF 2019 on a topic of next generation internet 
the panel is eight white men and one woman only without youth. So how do you speak on next generation internet but not involving youth at all in the discussion? So yeah, this is, uh, I would like for the global stakeholders to reach out to involve youth and not for just, not for just, uh, not for youth to just like uh, ask for involvement. They need to actively involve youth in the discussion. Uh, that's uh, the takeaway that I want to share in this session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ellen, for your intervention. It was really interesting, all the points that you mentioned, and um, um, I really I mean, liked what you said about youth not as a symbol. Youth not as a symbol of to de just be put on a stage to make a five minute or 10 minute commentary, but then not actually engaging them is not uh, conducive. It's just showing, oh yes, we ticked the box, we met the quota, we've done that. And now we are going to have discussions with everybody else. Uh, that's uh, the, the, the points that you were making about that was, is very important that the manner in which uh, youth are being engaged is more, uh, actually engaging and involved. Youth are active uh, internet users and sometimes policymakers do not even understand the manner in which we as youth use the internet and we come up with new innovations that they have never perceived. So policymaking is always one step behind. Policymaking does not prepare for what is coming into the future because they are always uh, reacting to things rather than preparing for, for these things. And by engaging youth, perhaps they will be able to see in advance issues that are going to be raised in the future. And that, uh, that also leads to a very important point you make in regards to con controversies around internet policies and the lack of awareness of these policies and how that influences people and causes them to get into big problems. Um, we then create an, an environment in which we are not really sure what's happening for ourselves and have consequences that we never envisioned would happen. So thank you very much for your intervention, and I'm very pleased that you were both able to join us uh, remotely, and uh, we would have loved to have you join us here, but perhaps we can see if the future in, in Poland will be brighter for us in terms of uh, participation here face-to-face. Um, -face. I would like to go to our uh, next speaker, um, Marco Paloski, who is a CDIC ambassador, please. Uh, thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Marko Pawski, coming from North Macedonia, and here I am as a representative of the of CIDIC uh, community. Uh, I will briefly show, uh, tell what uh, CIDIC is doing with the youth school, which is for the youth uh, people to get more involved in the internal governments, and shortly brief, brief some of the uh, problems we in the CEE plus region are having uh, with internal governments. So I would say that uh, uh, one of the problems that we are having is that uh, many of the youth people and also the other, everyone, is not very aware about what is internet governments and what it mean and how can they get more to change a little bit in the things. So this is a really big problem because a lot of the people, when you say internet governments are, co internet governance are connecting with the government thing and are not very, um, how to say, interested to do that. So that's one of the problem, awareness of the internet governments in our region. Uh, second one, I would say that most of this region um, have uh, national IGFs and some uh, internet society chapters, but not all of them have this, and also not uh, youth IGF, which is, I think, a very small number. So what is uh, youth school trying to do is to uh, gather some of the this kind of uh, of this region youth people so it can educate about internet governance so it can make a baseline so when they come at uh, their own country to make uh, changes maybe start youth IGF we are encouraging them to make a uh, movement because with uh, making some entity into your country, you can then uh, proceed with educating, making uh, more involvement, and sure, sharing the internal governance uh, things in your country. I am glad to say that because uh, last year I was a youth uh, participant in the youth school, and after that I get more involved in the CIDIC region, and now I'm CIDIC ambassador, and this year I'm finalizing the process for youth IGF North Macedonia. So the last thing that I will mention is that uh, also in this region, the local support is, um, let's say, little, 
maybe not, but yeah, I would say little. And not every country and every national IGF wants to work with the youth IGF. We have this kind of uh, issues experienced, but yeah. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your uh, intervention. It's, it's really great that, to hear that you're working towards more youth IGFs. Uh, this week, there were three uh, countries that approached me saying, we need a youth IGF, and we don't know where to start because there is no information available on the IGF website. There is no information available um, online, and people don't really know what documents to share. They can share the event, but they don't know what is the criteria and the requirements. So um, if the people who want to set up a youth IGF uh, are in this room, but I, I also have their contact details. Um, I, I can't see everyone here. Um, please do reach out to Marco, who, who, who has clearly more understanding um, about the processes and what are the requirements and how to move forward on this, um, which is extremely important that we now have this collaboration available and this understanding of how to move forward. So thank you very much. It is, it's kind of worrying that we now had three interventions where people are saying, yeah, we don't know how to present IG or the people do not know what IG is. Um, perhaps we need to start um, rediscussing or redeveloping the manner in how we raise awareness on this or how we want to engage the type of people. But in the meantime, I would like to turn to our next uh, speaker, Jan Dona uh, from uh, uh, Youth please. Uh, thank you, Nadia, for introducing and possibility to join the panel. And thank you all for, for joining us. Uh, good morning, Cole. It's my great pleasure to share with you uh, the outcomes of our uh, meeting, which happened in The, in the Hague, uh, Netherlands, this year where the Youth Big happened. As you all probably know, uh, Youth Big is about to prepare young participants uh, to join the Eurodic session. Uh, thanks to my personal experience, uh, I can highly recommend you to participate in this, in this amazing event. Uh, and back to the concrete uh, outcomes of the, of the meeting, uh, we created uh, some, some messages. We can divide them uh, into two broad categories. The first category is digital ethics and inclusion, and the second category is cybersecurity, trust, and privacy. So first category, digital ethics and inclusion, and the first message from us. Uh, internet governance processes and policies about youth need to be better communicated so that young people can be better informed and their participation strengthened through multi-stakeholder dialogue. Second message, emerging concerns online such as hate speech, fake news, privacy, and cyberbullying are not sufficiently discussed and thought at schools. We envision building a curriculum that is enforced by regulation, focusing on raising awareness of the online environment and developing necessary digital skills and digital literacy of the youngest students. Harmonization of states, ethics, codes on designing algorithm using digital cooperation, including youth participation. That's our third message. And the fourth, we wish for the inclusion of teenagers through the Internet Governance Youth Ambassadors Program in the decision-making process on local, regional, and national level already existing youth parliaments should be strengthened to give the leaders of tomorrow voice today. And concerning the second broad category, cybersecurity, the first message is uh, to reclaim privacy. We want governments to have proactive involvement instead of reactive measures which are happening today in order to raise awareness of on data protection and online user safety, we call the governments to foster public discussion and mainstream digital literacy in basic public education. Second message, furthermore, we call on the private sector to make anonymity a viable option. Third, cybersecurity is collective effort that requires a multi-stakeholder approach. We should achieve it with transparency while respecting our privacy. IoT is an important pillar in cybersecurity because it is a continuous exponential development with growing capabilities and threats. We must raise awareness, enrich and update education curriculum on IoT security. And the last one, the last message from us is that regulators should encourage technology to be open source to foster transparency. And that's all from my side.
Thank you so much for sharing the message. Oh, I'm not talking to myself. Oh, thank you so much for sharing the messages from Youth Day. These are very strong statements, and it shows a clear path forward of what the youth were deciding on. on and these are uh, some of them very controversial topics, and, and some of them have like clear roots. And now we just need to decide um, how to advocate for them and how we are going to be able to implement them and, and move and stride forward. But it's clear that here we can actually argue with each other about the manner in which we will move forward. And that's very exciting to see that uh, youth are dedicated to, uh, to set policies, to create their ideas and bring them forward. And that's what we're going to um, focus on. So I would like to uh, move to our last speaker, Elizabeth Schauermann, who is the organizer of Youth IGF Summits. So please go ahead. Thank you, Nadia. This is Elisabeth Schaumann speaking from the German Informatics Society. And as many of you already know, um, this year we found favorable circumstances to convene a global group of young people, over 120 from over 40 countries, to um, start the policy development development process that heavily builds also on what the different initiatives have been doing for years in some cases. Um, and our goal was to network people, network initiatives, but also produce a tangible outcome to come to the, to the IGF and be able to um, work on our advocacy, see where we can be present. And I really have to commend all of the participants on site, but also remotely, who um, who participated and contributed and made this a real success, and we really hope that we can try and transfer this to uh, the forthcoming years. So, um, in the course of three months, basically through webinars and then an on-site meeting in Berlin last Sunday. Um, the participants identified 11 key messages. You can find them on the website yigf.de and you are very welcome to use them, translate them, spread them, and also reach out to us anytime if you need help with that. Um, I have been reading those messages for quite, I mean, quite often throughout this, um, uh, this IGF, so I will reframe them from that now, but I will give you a basic overlook of um, the main ideas that, were, that we touched upon. So um, obviously one key thing, and I, I now borrow a claim from the disability movement, is nothing about us without us. So we were speaking about youth participation and the barriers that young people face in internet governance. Specifically, we were talking about digital education and how to skill people and what is needed to, um, to get young people to participate meaningfully in the digital age. And we also talked about child protection online and how children should be um, included in the discussion when it is about them. Um, our next theme was safety and security as uh, our participants have identified youth as a vulnerable group in many uh, circumstances. They talked about critical infrastructure and made suggestions for cybersecurity strategies. Our third theme was access uh, to the internet, but also an accessible internet once you're connected. Um, Going forward, uh, one main theme, we had three messages in this, uh, in this topic, was platform governance, um, ranging from regulation to self-regulation, um, to transparency especially, and, and also open data and research, going back to education as well. And our last theme was uh, data and privacy, but mostly along the lines of AI, algorithmic decision making, facial recognition. So our participants identified threats, but also made recommendations on how to approach those topics. And throughout all of these messages, what really stuck out was um, that we addressed all, over and over again uh, multi-stakeholder responsibility for all of these themes and topics and questions, and uh, youth should definitely be consulted in, on all levels. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for your intervention. And um, if you are interested to reading the key messages, they are up on the um, IGF Germany website, right? The 11 key messages? So it's on our website, which is yigf.de. Fantastic, and I highly encourage you. There are some really interesting points and comments, and if you haven't seen some of the ambassadors, they use these 11 key messages to go into uh, uh, different platforms and different discussions to bring these ideas forward and demanded that these were being discussed. And that was wonderful to see, and it's a great opportunity for people to be involved with. So uh, I would like to ask if we can put up the Plectica on the screen. So what we did while we were speaking um, about these different uh, perspectives on the issues that were happening in the different regions, we set up a map about all the issues that are important to us. And also we outlined the three policy questions that we have um, associated to this session. So our first policy question was, which issues do you want to highlight as priority key points at the IGF to global stakeholders? The second policy uh, question is, how can we improve involvement and return rates of youth at the IGF? And the last one is, which challenges do youth face to attend and participate at the IGF? So while we wait for the Plectica to be on the screen and you can see the issues they're involved with, I would like to kind of move to uh, point number two, the policy question number two. How can we improve involvement and return rates of youth at the IGF? Some things that we have noticed is that the people that do return every year are the people who come from organizations and have the capabilities and funding to be able to return to, uh, often also from Western countries who have less problems with visas. And the people who do not return are people who are one-timers who are just new to the IG uh, processes, are just learning more about it, and they are not returning back. Why does this happen? I actually wanted to tell uh, a story regarding this, and uh, this will give me an opportunity. This will give the speakers a little bit of an opportunity to make their, uh, to clarify their thoughts uh, on, on this question. Um, uh, before I, I give you the floor to speak on it, and then open the floor to all of you. But I wanted to tell you a story, and I'm cautiously looking around the room because I'm talking about someone, is that the first time I went to an IGF, I went to Geneva, I had the worst time ever. I was a speaker on a panel in which I presented a, a, a particular point of view regarding the information disorder on fake news. And um, it was a, a very great session, and the moderator really involved me, but afterwards, there was nobody who was really acknowledging or I, I didn't need any kind of a pat on my back or anything like that, but people ignored the statements that I said and they really focused on uh, other issues that, for example, that I counterpointed, completely ignoring what I was saying. Um, I went to stakeholders and I asked them, can I contact you because I think that your work is aligned to mine and they gave me fake email addresses. I got fake email addresses from stakeholders here and I felt awful. I emailed them the same day and I said, you know, my project alliance was yours or I have a, a group of people who, um, who are working towards a, a cause that you are doing, so I think that they should be involved in your processes. Uh, or I said, oh, you are working on a, on a particular project. I'd love for you to invite you to my university to talk more about it. And I got fake email addresses. I did not feel welcome being here. But there was one person, there was one person in this entire event that uh, that really kind of uh, changed the process for me. And, and, and I have to come back to the comment uh, that Ellen made that at that moment in time, I felt there was an absence of inspiration platform for you so they can become, so they can have aspirations to become stakeholders. There were two people who actually made me stay, but there, uh, one of them is uh, Michael, who's in this room, who introduced me to YCIG, who's sitting over there. And he really en encouraged me and, and, and pushed me to get involved, to have the courage to walk up to speakers. Uh, but I want to talk about someone who's luckily not in the room, and I'm not going to mention him because I don't know if he would li like me to, but he made all the difference. This was one person who did not know me. I walked into a session. He saw that I looked lost, came to sit next to me and said, hi, my name is. We went into this session, of which I knew nothing about. It was about ICANN, and ICANN is complicated if you're not any familiar to the process at all. So I just sit there, and I'm just looking at this ICANN event, 
and this person comes up to me and says, that person is from that board and they're talking about this issue. This issue is important because of X, Y, Z. They're talking about IPv6. I have no idea what that means. He explains IPv6 is, they talk about IoT and I was, and I, at least since then, I have asked him at least 10 times more, what is IoT, what does it stand for? And every time without hesitation, he explains it every time again. That makes all the difference to a young person to want to return to do better and to push the other stakeholders who do give false uh, details, who do not take you seriously, because there is this one person who inspires you to teach other people. And he inspires me and Michael inspires me to come back to uh, YCIG every, t every year. They inspire me to do take the time to explain to someone, oh, I was in this session and I look, are you, does that person look confused? Um, I see young people sitting alone. I come and sit next to them. I say, hey, my name is, I'm, I'm, I'm here from YCIG. Um, can I explain to you something? This type of mentorship leads other people to come back because they feel included. Many of you are able to return back because you come as ISOC ambassadors and you have a community of a group and you say, hey, let's all go together. Some people are here from Youth Dig. You come together and say, hey, we know each other and you feel welcome. We need to create this platform and this environment for youth that are also coming as individuals and youth that come from areas in which we are, uh, who are not familiar to the IG process and don't know where their topic fits in. I've met people who studied business but are not consultants. Uh, I have met uh, software engineers who really work on coding but don't really fit within the policy sector. But they come back because they found their community. And I hope that YCIG, but also other, uh, you as an individual can be that type of mentor. So having spoken about my personal experience regarding this, I, I believe that um, our involvement and return rates is about how we decide to get involved. Whether or not we are a young person or if we're an older person, it's about reaching out to people and giving them the feeling that they're being acknowledged and listened to. So I would like to look at my panel uh, here and ask them whether or not you have any comments or uh, ideas of how we can improve involvement and return rates of youth at the IGF. Well, having tried to facilitate exactly that, I definitely have some thoughts on it. I mean, um, it always helps to be seen or see yourself as part of a group and as, a net, as of a network and for this such sessions and uh, youth programs are great but we also cannot deny like, imbalances in power and funding that then also reflect on the visibility of young people or how they are treated by, by others. We can be nice to each other all we want. But um, we also have to be quite realistic that without a stringent advocacy strategy and how we move forward and really pushing that topic over and over again, it, people will always be excluded and we don't want to exclude them because this process is designed to be open. There are just hurdles. They might not be visible when you first look at them. So but I would be super happy to hear not only from the two of you, but also from the room, how you manage to do this. I'm, I'm coming from a very privileged position and I, I'm, I'm, of course, don't see every aspect of how it can be difficult or easy to participate. Thank you very much for your comments. I was wondering if perhaps Ufa, who is joining us online, perhaps she has any ideas because she mentioned uh, a, a few uh, uh, mentions early, a few mentions early, a few issues earlier that was related to the African youth. Um, Ufa, I, I don't know if she is available. Hello? Yes. Hello, we can hear you. For the African, for the African youth, like I mentioned earlier, most of our challenges have to do with um, understanding the issues. The internet governance agenda is not quite popular here, so I feel like unless we can solve the problem of awareness and understanding, there's not, um, there's, um, 
a lot that we can do after that. And then participating and then um, helping ourselves to understand the issues. At Digital Grassroots, that's the organization that I co-founded along with some other youth from the region and outside the African region. We do a lot of work with ensuring and promoting the internet governance awareness for young people from underserved communities. So basically, and then matching them up with industry experts for membership because it does a lot to have someone that you can talk to that will answer your questions, that will explain what the acronyms are, that will point out what meetings you should remotely participate in, what mailing list discussions you should join in, and um, and basically things like that. That actually really helps a lot. So um, that kind of mentorship or that kind of connection is extremely helpful sometimes. Thank you very much. I'm just looking back at my panel. Is there anyone who would like to make a comment? Uh, I work here. Uh, I was similar when I mentioned in my introduction for the. Uh, well, I don't know what last year when I was uh, at uh, ISOC ambassador. When I came back home, I was very motivated, and that's why I started the process of uh, creating a youth IGF at my country. But um, I can mention that there are a lot of problems that the youth, when come back, I, I'm talking from my region, from Southeast Europe. Not everybody in the country or the institutions and the companies are, how to say, welcome to support and do something like this. Because first of all, when you, they, you said that you are youth, they are not interested in they think that this is not serious. And second, they are not interested, I don't know, in promoting these kind of things and supporting this because they uh, do not make money of this or do not, it's not their primary business or they don't want it at, at, at the end. So what I suppose is um, we can, everybody can do something after this kind of events, IGF, Eurodic, CDIC, every kind of intern governments, because you make a lot of contacts there and uh, these contents can help you. Because I can say that if I didn't make the contents with the uh, ISOC ambassadors uh, last year, I wouldn't, uh, became, wouldn't come with the idea to create a uh, UTIGF in my country because they helped me a lot with contacts and how to organize, how to do things, and how to go to the institution or some companies that may help you. Uh, of course, there, you need a local support at some level, but uh, my, how to say, my intuition is to push it and make it happen because if we do not make it, nobody else will make it for us. Thank you very much. Jan, you wanted to also comment? Thank you, Nadia. Uh, I really enjoyed that my uh, other, other colleagues and panelists mentioned mentorship. Uh, this is exactly what I want to talk about and what I, what I missed. Uh, I already participated in ICANN meeting, and for the newcomers, it can be very overwhelming. A lot of sessions is uh, ongoing at the, at the same time. Uh, there are a lot of acronyms, uh, quite similar, uh, quite similar as here. Uh, would be really, really uh, amazing to have a one mentor who could guide you through the whole program. For example, if you have a legal background, the, the mentor could guide you which sessions are the best for you. Uh, uh, he could introduce you to, uh, to panelists or Mm, basically, you f you would feel more more welcome, and not not like uh, Nadia Nadia well mentioned at the at the beginning that sometimes uh, the newcomers uh, they don't really feel uh, welcome. And uh, second thing which I want to mention is. Uh, that it's not only about participating one event or second event, it's really important what's happening in between. So uh, the, the, your personal participation should show that you did something. So for example, if you didn't, didn't hear, ICANN has a very nice uh, program for, for uh, youngsters, it's called Next Gen. And uh, what are you doing uh, together with the, with the mentor? You are pre preparing presentation and during the ICANN meeting itself, you are presenting what you worked before on and that's that's uh, what I can recommend thank you thank you so much for your recommendations um, so for all the people that just came into the room all the issues that we discussed over the the last nearly an hour are up on the plectica so you have all the ideas and thoughts that have come from um, our uh, panelists. I just wanted to open this briefly to the floor for, we'll, t we'll take three questions at the moment and then I would like to move to the next policy question. 
So, um, in, in which then you will have a larger floor to talk about the challenges uh, everybody faces. So I'd like to have three questions. Who has any questions? Uh, there is one over here. There is two, three. So in that order, please. Uh, if you would like to, uh, I don't think I have a mic here, but please step up um, to one of the microphones at the table. Please, please, please. Please, please, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for offering your seat first. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ghayur Bawri. I'm from Afghanistan, and I represent uh, Internet Society Afghanistan chapter, and as well as the uh, national uh, IGF in Afghanistan. Likely, uh, okay, well, once, uh, like, uh, I really appreciate those who support me to come here as my first global IGF, and since last three years, I've been uh, one of the key organizing committee member of national IGF in Afghanistan. So, like experiencing the global one is my first time as, uh, with lots of experience. Uh, my, my, I had a question. Uh, like in, since last three years that we are organizing national uh, IGF, we covered the youth IGF in one of our parallel sessions, like for two to three hours. Uh, like, uh, but this time, uh, since we, uh, we 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 noticed a very uh, prominent. Uh, and tangible outcome from our uh, IGF events, so, uh, and especially uh, that attracted our youth. So this time we have uh, planned to organize a youth IGF very like separately. It was supposed to happen on 16 November, but due to this global IGF that most of our team were uh, traveling. So we, and also we had like a bit uh, financial issues. We were uh, like obligated to postpone, uh, most probably in the mid-December it, it's, it's gonna happen. Uh, my question is uh, to those colleagues who have already organized youth uh, IGF is like uh, about the, the topics you have spoken. We also cover those topics like if we talk about the cybersecurity or about the IoT or about the uh, fake news or about like uh, digital literacy. So I think these kinds of uh, topics uh, are not always in context to uh, some areas or geographic uh, locations like in Afghanistan. So what are the most prominent and uh, effective topics that should be covered that youth can absorb and can learn from it? If anyone of our speakers or uh, anyone who can answer this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your question. Um, can I take the second question and the third question first before we answer this? Hi, I'm Elliot from Australia. Here is part of the ISOC IGF Youth Ambassador Program. Um, Australia doesn't have a fantastic youth IGF presence. Um, in establishing youth IGFs, um, particularly in large, diverse countries, Australia is a big place and Indonesia is a big place, Germany is a big place. How do youth IGFs balance geographic diversity and um, diversity even within the country, particularly from youth, whether it be youth who are participating from universities or are perhaps still in school? I'd be interested to hear how that sort of diversity is tackled. Thank you very much for your question. Here on the right. Uh, hello, it's Umar Han from Pakistan. Rather to ask a question, I want to comment on your second question that how can we improve the participation of the youth at IGF? Uh, first of all, thank to you, Nadia, and your team, because I'm here just of two people here. And because I, I haven't heard about IGF before you tell me, told me uh, uh, one month ago, uh, basically, you and my uncle made it uh, uh, um, in reality to come to the IGF before this. I haven't the idea. I know what I'm planning uh, that uh, I'm the only one from my province to participate in the IGF from the whole Heber Pakhtun who I'm participating. Uh, Besides going to um, spoke about the IGF, uh, I will st um, sit with the stakeholders, with my government and the IT companies, and I will also brief my youth about um, uh, the IGF. And I would like, inshallah, I will try my best uh, to have maximum participation uh, in the Poland uh, because the way you made uh, for me here in the um, in Germany, I would like to have the same for my youth, for my country, young people in the Poland. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to... Um, um, uh, 
I'm, I'm, cautious, I'm cautiously looking at, at, at my panel. Perhaps you can um, address the questions. But did you want to ask a question or make a comment? I have to go soon, unfortunately. So I wanted to make a important intervention about YCIG. So if you want, you can address the questions. And then if, if it's OK with everyone, I would like to request the floor. Um, would you like to make your interventions first? Sure, I would like to touch upon the first two questions um, regarding which topics are to be addressed in a youth IGF. I strongly believe that those topics have to come from the young people themselves. This is a longer process. You have to figure out a way to ask them or to be open to their suggestions, but um, only by that way you can ensure that this is relevant to them, especially in a context that is regional or national. Those are very specific uh, sometimes, and I would just try and cater to that as much, much as possible. And uh, to the question on how to balance diversity, I mean, Germany is not the big, um, so we didn't do a good job <laughs> in our national IGF this year. This is super hard. Um, because apart from trying to address everybody in, and gathering enough funds to, to also make them, you know, be able to travel throughout the country, there is little you can do like in a second, but I believe if you make your involvement sustainable and you can try to reach more people over time. Thank you very much. I heard that uh, Ufa, who's, our, uh, who's online with us, wanted to make uh, an, uh, uh, an answer. Wanted to make an answer? Uh, the first question and the second question, because I feel that they are interrelated. Um, in, the, in Nigeria, we had the Nigerian Youth IGF to, um, this year as well. And Nigeria is a very, very big country with a very huge population and a lot and very very and a very very diverse community but um, what we did was that we focused mainly on the participation of students and young professionals in the Nigerian youth IGF and also when I and what I want to say for the best um, question is that the when organizing a youth IGF on, or basically trying to lead youth in internet governance you should not focus so much on defining what they should participate in Rather, you should give them the broad overview of the internet governance ecosystem and map out ways that they could contribute. That way, they are able to define um, they are able to define um, topics that interest them, and then um, um, follow through on that path. If not, you'll just be forcing on issues to them. However, if they're able to know what interests them, what topics, what organizations they would, um, they would like to follow um, follow their activities what um, discussions they would like to jump on and things like that, it will be easier for them to have more intentional um, contributions. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, um, before, I, I would actually like to move to the, the third uh, policy question, but before this, um, Michael wanted to make an intervention about YCIG. Thank you so much, Nadia. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael Ogia. Um, just quickly, before I, um, bef well, I essentially, uh, I was in, I've been involved in YCIG since 2015, and between 2016 and 2017, I was the interim steering. I was on the interim steering committee, and um, a few things that I just want to bring up quickly. Um, it is involving both the second policy question that you've raised, Nadia, as well as something much larger. And um, basically, um, first of all, when we're talking about young people. We need to take something out of the lexicon, and that is that young people do not care about internet governance. Young people care time after time, survey after survey. We see that young people all around the world care about privacy, care about security. They care about these things. So I think it's just really important as ter in terms of communication from our point of view to, to not hurt our own argument and our own cause. That's number one. Number two, resources. There are plenty of resources. I know because I've collected them. They are currently on the YCIG website, and there also is a better, longer, and um, more thorough version on the Eurodig wiki, so FYI. Number three, 
is um, we, I'm really, really, uh, well, number three is about the importance of the national and regional and sub-regional initiatives. Um, it is difficult to get young people here. It is, um, you know, especially since the fact that it's been in Europe for the past three years and it's gonna be in Europe next year as well. Um, you know, I, I heard, I absolutely understand the, uh, the uh, intervention that we or that we heard um, from our colleague in Africa, the fact is um, it is difficult for young people to get involved sometimes in the NRIs because they're not necessarily willing to work with young people. The way, the, the best kind of antidote that I have to that, solutions to that is to contain, is um, to continue to organize ourselves and, and keep, maintain that solidarity that comes from self-organizing and um, that comes from especially collecting best practices because obviously not every situation is similar. But having said that, I'm genuinely concerned about the future of the YCIG. I cannot thank Nadia enough for the end, and this is not meant to be just um, self-congratulatory. She really took over uh, for the YCIG in this, uh, you know, after me, and we could have essentially had a, a leadership vacuum if it wasn't for her, and her term is ending soon. I'm really concerned about you know, how the YCIG will continue going forward and how it will continue to support existing youth initiatives. I call on anybody in this room, clearly you care about these issues to, um, that you, in, you know, to, st to step up if it part of, or if you know, this is something that interests you, if you have the time, um, because I, I really am concerned about what's gonna be happening in the years coming forward. Will the YCIG also, um, face uh, a problem where it could die, it could uh, become inactive. That's something that it really takes tireless work. I know because I did it, and Nadia has been absolutely incredible for the past two years. Um, and so I, you know, I really uh, want to thank you for that, Nadia, and, and encourage everyone here, anyone that's part of the YCIG, to make sure that it does not die because youth issues and the youth voices absolutely need to be included and absolutely need to be amplified. And if we're not gonna do it, nobody else will. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael, for your comments. Um, you you gave, gave a, an interlude into a notice that I wanted to give. The YCIG now has their elections and it's now your opportunity. If you are dedicated on improving youth participation at the IGF, you can apply. My statutory term ends, which means that I'm not allowed to actually go again for election. So uh, there's a two year maximal, maximum um, time that uh, I can sit on the steering committee. I can still be involved and I love being involved and I want to present to you some projects that I have for the future but uh, my term ends here. And after me, if you do not apply, then we do not have a representative for youth that sits in a dynamic coalitions meetings. We do not have a representative that will attend MAC meetings um, as, a, as a dynamic coalition representative. Uh, we think it's extremely important that you uh, step up and provide this opportunity for people. And you're not alone. Uh, where Michael, uh, I succeeded from Michael, Michael is still here in these sessions contributing. So will I come back next year in Poland. I will be there to help you and support you throughout your term. You're not alone. We are here to mentor you and, and make sure that you succeed to uh, em empower other youth and develop other youth to either come to um, the IGF or to participate in communities around you because we believe in you and we want to foster this development. So please, if you do know people in your community, you think um, they can uh, they can really do something um, internationally. If you are if you do not have the time yourself or the resources, if you know people who can learn want to learn uh, because this is a learning process. We don't expect you to be the leader uh, already, but this is a learning process. If you want to come and learn from not only us but also the mentors that we have, this is your chance now. The elections are open. You can join us on the uh, YCIG Facebook page and. Uh, register your name and uh, um, nominate yourself to, to be part. We, it's uh, one person per region, so you apply and, and compete against your region. Um, so there is no contestant for my region. I'm from Western Europe and the other groups. Um, but uh, that being said, I would like to move on to the last policy question. Which challenges do youth face to attend and participate at the IGF? And before I open it up to the audiences that are here, um, I would actually like to ask how many of you have actually tried to join in the remote participation? 
because I tried to do it earlier today, and it's really hard. I can do Adobe Illustrator, I can design things on Photoshop, but I do not understand how to navigate the remote session. It took me a, a, a good 20 minutes to half an hour, and if you're not dedicated to the cause, and my dedication to the cause is to make sure that I'm capable to speak with our people uh, who are joining me remotely, then if you are a young person and it takes you longer than five minutes to try to access the internet, then that's never going to happen. I have a lot of colleagues that are joining us uh, from Kurdistan, Afghanistan, um, who wanted to be here in person, and they're not capable of logging in because they only have a mobile phone. They have a mobile phone and they cannot join remotely. Um, this is, this is uh, complicated, so what challenges do you uh, face in your regions? What do you face to be able to attend and participate at the IGF? I understand that we had questions about visas already, and this is definitely something that we need to, to look towards the MAC to see if we can actually move the IGF beyond Europe, and I look towards you to encourage also your governments when you're at IGFs. Can we please host the IGF, the global IGF? Um, but then um, I open the floor to you. What are your thoughts and ideas? There is a one hand here. Is there anyone else who has a comment or a question? A second one? Uh, let's just start with these two speakers' uh, interventions and then uh, we'll move beyond that. Hello. So everybody can hear me, right? So this is Veronica Arroyo from the Youth Observatory. Um, ISOC Youth, a special group of interests. Um, I want to highlight that even though there are, we, we all pass through some difficult situation, as you mentioned before, uh, we had bad experience. I, can, I have to highlight as well that we all already had good experiences as well. And a good uh, part or a good um, way to have those good experiences is to belong to groups. So here, at least, for example, you've been seeing a really good, sorry, I'm, I'm just sick today, so I cannot speak properly. But um, for example, in the case of the youth observatory and the youth seek, which is the same thing, um, it's good the support that you get from a community, from the group that you have. Even though you, you are not able to come, then you have the support of other people online that will always be there for you. We've organized youth IGFs in other parts of the world, and it has been very valuable, the opportunity to have friends like you, like who care about the same issue. The experience is much better when you belong to a group. And I, I just want to invite you to read the Youth Atlas, which is uh, something we did, that you might already know this, and that has some stories of how we that our stories, basically. So you can take this as an example, but I want to also highlight with the problems. You mentioned it, visas. Yeah, that's quite important, and it's really important when you have a, a community, a global community, and you come from developing countries, and that's that's a point. Then the next point is funding. It's really difficult. Maybe for developed countries, it's really easy to get funding because you have a lot of companies that can that do social work, but when you come from developing countries, that's very difficult. They do not allocate things for youth IGFs. You have to have really good connections to get those fundings. And obviously enterprises won't pay you because they don't see something there. That this moves to my third point, opportunities. Um, the Youth Observatory uh, propose uh, three workshops for this IGF. For the first time, our topics were not about inclusion of youth in the IGF. For the first time, we proposed uh, things related to artificial intelligence, uh, about um, disinformation and um, uh, problems with content. I'm sorry, I'm really sick right now. And, um, and we propose uh, like things that really matter, that really we, we care. As Michael uh, mentioned it before, like internet governance is something there, but we care about the specific topics. But none of the three workshops were accepted. Some of the, um, how can I say, the reviews that, I've, uh, that we've received was that there were no enough uh, diversity in our group, but if you read the names of the people who were there listed as the speakers, it was clearly easy to see that people from, were from different countries. You just needed to read the names. So I've, uh, we faced this for the first time because the other 
the other past FGFs, we um, ask for more inclusion, we talk about the future of work and things like that, and then where sessions were approved. But this time when we wanted to propose and, and start talking about serious stuff that really affected us, affects us, we didn't have the opportunity. So I think opportunities here for us is really important. And why? Because if I say that I have a session on artificial intelligence or, or a session on uh, hate speech, things like that, then I can get funding. So that's my point. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your experience. It's extremely important for, to understand for us how can we actually participate in the process and if our submissions are uh, being rejected, then um, we need to understand how and why and and in the matter we can improve or changing mindsets. Um, there is another one. There, um, I'm confused now. Yeah, please go ahead. Hi everyone, this is Jenna from, from Dot Asia Organizations. I am the community engagement lead of this company, but I'm also the coordinator of NetMission Academy, which is an online academy for youth in Asia Pacific. And at the same time, also the uh, coordinator of the Asia Pacific Youth IGF. Uh, I want to make some. Uh, I'm, I want to address on the challenges that I find as a youth to participate in IGF, which uh, which is uh, how we as a youth to participate IGF as contributor. Because I just give a really brief review on how I participate the regional IGF or other academy in Asia Pacific. Let's say, for example, in the. Asia Pacific Regional IGF, youth can actually contribute and participate in the process as uh, workshop organizers because there's quite different initiative. We take action to some workshop. Instead of sitting in the room commenting or giving opinion, we actually be the leader of uh, certain workshops to actually contribute in the entire internet governance process in that way. Other than that, I would like to mention the Asia Asia Pacific Internet Governance Academy that we have in Asia Pacific also. Uh, the Net Mission Ambassador actually um, involved in this academy not as participation uh, participants only, but as the youth facilitators as certain uh, a certain for certain sessions also. So I would say I find it's kind of challenging to in, engage in IGF sometimes as a youth from Asia Pacific. Especially, let, let's say it for example, I find it hard just to speak on one of the panel as a youth, as a woman from Asia Pacific. So I think this is one of the challenges um, that youth are facing in Internet Governance Forum because maybe because there's like, I, I see the, the notes on online on the platform saying that because of lack of knowledge or lack of opportunity, maybe because there are many certain several reasons or factors behind that may Make us really challenging to engage in that way, but I think we have a value as a youth to contribute as worship organizers or as a speaker also. So, so I think that's the point that we can put effort in working on. Like what I also mentioned last year in the for uh, in in the same setting also, uh, in this youth community, if we want to uh, bring if we want to improve our youth involvement in internet governance for maybe within y YCIG, we can first of all ensure uh, or improve the diversity of our youth community also. Maybe give more opportunity for youth from Africa or from Asia Pacific or Latin America to speak up more. So within the, our youth community, we can have a more completed view of the youth community, but not in certain part of the world world only. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, for the last two years, YCIG has been very Western focused because we don't always have uh, um, people elected uh, from, from older regions. And then um, whoever is on the, on the steering committee then takes over those regions and try their best to reach out to those communities. And of course, we, we would prefer having people from those communities reaching out uh, and, and collaborating with us uh, uh, across 
borders across cultures to be able to achieve things. Um, are there any other comments or questions about challenging? You wanted to, did you? All right, would you like to make a comment? Hello everybody, my name is Margarita. I'm representing Social Impact private company that we work with the global competence and teenagers, but by teenagers a bit younger, 9 to 14. But being in youth organizations myself, when I was in the youth category and also working with a lot of youth up till now, I'm an educator. I want to say to share a few thoughts on how, first of all, to address Michael's point, the potential issue of having more people uh, participating in this initiative and as well as to the, it targets other questions as well right away so the problem with the youth participating in the initiatives is usually motivation or the lack of it or not understanding what is the motivation behind this or that initiative if young people do not see why they have to input extra work, they already have homework, right? We have to remember that. They will not do it. And there are very few adults, definitely very few parents, who would explain to them the value of this or that initiative or project. So having some kind of roadmap to their potential benefits or their career options in the future, if they are a part of youth IGF, for example, and presenting it comprehensively on the website, or you mentioned Facebook page, I don't know if there is a website, making it easier for young people to access this information in infographics format, something very up to the point, without a lot of text, um, that will hook their attention, that's number one. And number two, following up on that. So you were asking, this gentleman was asking how to um, know what young people want to talk about. And I agree that we have to ask them, but we also have to guide them. Because they don't know everything and they are not following the news. They don't know the challenges that exist in the digital world. So how to guide them is also our responsibility. And in this case, we can have leaders like yourselves over here, to establish um, meetings with the youth that happen here. I know there, is, uh, there are some meetings in the cafeteria, <laughs> in, the, in the canteen, but I was not invited, for example. It's my first time here, and I had no idea about that. And I would like to join, and I would like to listen as well. So some, having comprehensive information, just like a stand. Here, we have a lunch meeting with the youth. Come join, uh, participate. These kind of easy uh, directions for the youth and I'm talking about myself, I'm not in the category of youth in, in terms of age, but um, even for me, it's difficult to understand where to go, who can I talk with, and who is responsible for youth and who is not. So physical directions in the space, in the venue, are also very important. And it's difficult for me, and imagine for a person who is 20, 22, and the first time in a huge conference like this, it's very overwhelming, and there should be more support on that. So motivation in terms of why they should be here is one, um, and direction, more guidance is number two. So the second point I wanted to share briefly is um, people who work with the youth, there are quite a, a lot of us here, uh, they also have a lot of access. We have a lot of access and um, we can share more information. So creating some kind of um, community for people who work with the youth already and we can share this information on maybe bi-monthly basis look there will be another forum next year so you can update you can upload your questions online on Padlet or whatever um, tool you're using for this uh, conference and your question will be answered and this is where it will lead to so having this uh, comprehensive information that can come from us as well. So I am pretty sure that since we're all here and those who work with the youth would be interested in that too. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for your contribution. It's very valuable to know that we have support that goes just beyond youth and peer-to-peer -peer learning and peer-to-peer -peer structures. Uh, so thank you very much for letting us know that you're here and that we can reach out to you. Um, 
you raised some, some very excellent points and, and some of them, uh, there's definitely things that we can address here that can be improved for Poland. And um, cre the creating uh, the community of people working with the youth, so we have our Facebook page, we also have a website. And uh, even if you're not a young person underneath the age of 35, you can still join YCIG as an observer and you would still be able to send all your details over the mailing list and, and at post as part of the Facebook group. So any uh, uh, classes that you're giving, any uh, workshops, any webinars, um, we try to promote as much as possible in, in as, as, as well as news that is happening in your regions. So I, I, I kind of see you looking at me that you wanted to make a follow-up, so I'll briefly give you the word before giving the word to Jennifer, and I'm afraid that in five minutes we need to close the session, and I encourage you all to stay so that we can take the annual YSIC photo, which is when uh, we remind the IGF that youth are a, a big stakeholder, and we take a picture together to show them uh, how many are, there of us are. Sadly, however, um, many of us had to leave already. Uh, so I know uh, there is about 30, 40 people who have apologized for not being here, but then we'll just add them in the comments saying, you know, we wish you were here, but please make your follow-up. <laughs> Thank you. Just one more point I wanted to mention following your story on how you got involved in the forum. Leadership or um, training, personal development, professional development training is something that interests youth a lot. And I hear a lot of um, discussions here focusing on youth have... They, they state the problem, but they don't know how to address, uh, uh, how to find a solution in a sustainable way that can be actually applied. So your story is actually an answer to that. Students are interested, youth are interested in getting more training in professional and personal development. And by being here, it's already automatically provided um, by the leaders like yourself. Maybe it's not structured yet, but it definitely should be, and it could be one of the motivations for them to join as well. And this is not, unfortunately, highlighted anywhere in the forum, at least from what I've noticed. But that's a very uh, important, crucial point for them and for the future of the youth um, IGF. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Jennifer? Yeah, I'll try to make it short because I think you made a lot of the points I was going to make, so that's great. Um, so I'm Jennifer Boucher from RW Media. We build digital communities with young people all around the world. So that's why I'm interested in youth issues other than just the fact that I care also. Um, I come from a public health background, actually, and I've lived through the International HIV AIDS organ um, conferences for time after time. They're every two years, and they're a huge deal. And so I just have some tips and tricks, if that's useful. So indeed, a kind of youth zone is really, really helpful, a dedicated space that's attractive to young people. Also, the communications work, which also Michael talked about, is really crucial, making sure that it's really you know, UX designed and not corporate looking and boring is really important. Yeah, and some of the youth uh, IGF communications isn't all that sexy, actually, to be honest with you. So think about your users. Who are you targeting? You know, speak to them in their voice and in their colors and their branding styles. They'll listen to you a lot more. Use guerrilla marketing. You know, they're coming to Germany. Do you, I mean, the IGF is in Germany. You want to attract young local people. You know, do, do papering, you know, do marketing to them, go online. So those, those are really, you know, useful and cheap strategies, and you guys have energy, which is really great. Um, also, in terms of visas, so that's a really, that's, boy, that's just a horror scenario, and the right to freedom of movement is one of the most violated rights around the world, which, yeah, just angers me a lot. But we have seen a couple of little things work. One is actually, if you know ahead of time where the conference is going to be, hook up with the government and the embassy in your country. So if it's the German embassy, let's say you know, you're in, I don't know, Cameroon or whatnot, find, get a connection, start talking to the staff there, and when it gets rejected, shame the ambassador on internet, on, on Twitter. It worked for us with Yemen. Systematically, we have problems. The young person rejected, put the name of the ambassador in the tweet, you know, really made a big deal while the decision was reversed. So we can do something, but really have to work hard at it and be gutsy. 
I think I'm almost done. And then indeed the leadership, the mentoring, having a structure for supporting young people before, during, and after the conference is really, really crucial. And link it indeed to the things that they need, but also in terms of what they can get out of the sessions. And I'll close with one final thing. Don't ignore the little people. You know, in strategic influencing work, we always want to target the minister or the policymaker and so forth. Don't forget the person who's in charge of writing the content for the website, the person who's organizing the track sessions. Tar Target them as well. Most of the time, a lot of the stuff that they slip in won't be taken out. So you can get youth visibility right from the beginning in some of the content that's put out without going through a lot of trouble. Thank you very much for your contribution. It's, uh, it's the warrior style that I like about it. And uh, it, it's, it's really energizing, naming and shaming these ambassadors. Wow. I, I think, you know, to get to your cause, to get to your goals, we need to be gutsy. Thank you very much for your contribution. I'm going to be super cheeky. There is one comment um, there in the back that I would like to take. It's been a very quiet corner there, so I'm, just this one comment. Thank you very much. My name is Innocent. I'm from Uganda. I am an ISOC IGF Youth Ambassador. I uh, just have kind of homework for us. We've talked of so many challenges, but um, it seems most of us are going back without knowing, where, uh, without knowing how we're going to start. Um, I do realize that we have so many initiatives in our countries. I love the fact that these initiatives are there, but how do we coordinate these initiatives to see that we are actually working towards achieving the same goal? Like, what is the cooperation? I do believe that uh, it would be more sensible if these initiatives are working together than the divided format of work that we are using. That's what I've really seen. Like for us in Africa, most of these initiatives don't seem to have a pivot point where they actually meet and be like, you know what, okay, we're addressing this. Let's start from here. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it is really important. One of the things that we focus on is partnership and collaboration. So um, I highly encourage to let them know that YCIG exists and to come and join our platform so we know about all the opportunities so we then can connect these people. Um, as it is now 1 p.m. and I don't want to stand between you and your lunch, um, I just wanted to remind you to please stay for the picture. And also, um, we are... Uh, collecting your thoughts and ideas. It's in a plectica. We will leave that open um, on, uh, for you to peruse, to send to your friends, to your family, to the people in your communities, to add to those ideas that we just talked about. Also find your uh, solutions towards those, and then we will present that in the official report that will be handed to, over to the IGF. Um, I briefly wanted to talk about, you know, three projects for Poland. So, of course, our youth expert list is still open. Please add your name. Please tell your friends to add your name. Uh, in April, once we all submit our uh, session names, we will be reaching out to other session organizers to remind them youth are in stakeholders. We need to have youth experts on panels. So please be involved with that. Um, we had, uh, in Paris, we tried to set up a, uh, a program in which uh, YCIG hosts the IGF Newbies program. This year, there was no one that came in terms of there was no one that actually organized it to present. So there was a room full of people where there was no presenter, and a lot of people were really shocked about that the IGF for Newbies was... Um, empty. So we are going to lobby that we get to host this. And uh, uh, Jan's comment about perhaps providing a mentorship program and also the comments from the room. If you are uh, if you are passionate about supporting this initiative, please come and talk to me after the session so that we can try and, and facilitate this and see how we can move forward and you know, join yourself as mentors or if you can recommend someone, that would be wonderful to move forward as a, as a project. And lastly, what you mentioned regarding uh, skill building uh, in Poland. I, I, had the, I had the blessing to study in Poland. I did my master's there. So um, regarding a venue, um, perhaps I have the opportunity to provide a, a venue that we can use to do skills development before the IGF. We do not have funding, we do not have any program, but what we do have is a lot of intentions and goodwill. So if you are working on these things, if you are capable of providing these skills and uh, would like to work with me towards setting up something like this, please do reach out to me because that's something that we also wanted to, to look towards too. 
That being said, thank you so much all for uh, joining our session. And I want to thank very much all our speakers who were able to join us today here in person, but also remotely. I would like to thank my co-moderator, Virginia, who's been very silent, but she's been updating the Plectica to make sure that the issues are being discussed. Um, the Y6 steering committee couldn't be here, but they say hello and they send their best wishes. I would like to thank our remote moderators, Vanessa and Tibian, for their uh, work. And uh, the system is complex, but they make it easy for us to work with the people who are not able to be here. Uh, I would also like to thank very much our transcriber. This is a live transcription. So um, if you are listening to what I'm saying, uh, if you could write your name so we can thank you. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Andrew Smith. Thank you so much for, transcri uh, for tra transcribing. We really appreciate all your hard work. Also, thank you very much to all the translators and the staff that work here, uh, the IGF Secretariat for facilitating the Dynamic Coalitions, and of course, you as your audience. Your uh, topics and discussions are important to us, and uh, it only uh, helps us to make um, the IGF 2020 more accessible to youth. So with this, I would like to close the session. Thank you all very much, and please come forward to join us for the picture. <laughs>